Welcome back! <laughs> my, 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 you've come a long way. <laughs> and yet, we still have so far to go in this unit. It's just so important to address everything properly. In the last 12 videos, from video 366 to video 378, I've covered the risk factors for breast cancer. And we made a huge list of all of them. Here's that list again. But notice what's not on the list. Estrogen, progestogen, or estrogen plus progestogen together. And yet, most people claim quite confidently <laughs> that estrogen or progestogen or hormone replacement therapy in general, containing both estrogen and progestogen together, cause breast cancer. Even though these three things aren't even on the list of risk factors that can merely increase your risk for breast cancer. There's a huge leap from these three things not even being on the list to, and increasing your risk of breast cancer to actually causing breast cancer. How does this happen? I have seen obese, sedentary women claim quite frankly that HRT causes breast cancer while they puff on a cigarette, guzzle alcohol, and pig out on animal fat. So there they are, maxing out on all the known risk factors, but blaming an unknown one for actually causing breast cancer. It's shocking. Actually, most people blame these hormones for causing breast cancer. And there are actually some places where you will find estrogen, progestogen, or HRT listed as risk factors for breast cancer. But most of the time, rather than being credible sources of accurate information, those sources are intent on scaring you. Now, why would anyone want to scare you? Well, my dears, we live in a world that is full of scaring for the purpose of snaring. They scare you to snare you into doing or buying one thing over another. Sometimes the source is intent on protecting itself legally. And why would they want to do that? Well, when the general public harbors an irrational fear about something, it's easier for companies that produce the object of that fear to avoid liability by just acquiescing to the possibility that it can cause harm. That absolves them of liability, and it's easier than it is to resist the rampant misinformation. If a user of the product accuses the product of causing breast cancer, the company that made it can avoid liability by countering with the fact that breast cancer is listed as a risk on the product. And that makes it an assumption of the risk on the part of the woman who used the product. In other words, she took it knowing that it could cause breast cancer. This is why you will see warnings about estrogen, progestogen, and HRT causing breast cancer on the products themselves. These warnings are not accurate. It's just safer for the pharmaceutical company to say it causes breast cancer. So this is video number 379. And today I'm going to explain the difficulties in determining if estrogen, progestogen, or both cause breast cancer. These difficulties in getting to the truth on this are a huge source of distorted messages. So we have a situation in which everybody wants to know whether or not estrogen, progestogen, or estrogen plus progestogen together cause breast cancer. But unfortunately, it's very difficult to discover the answer. And this video sets the stage for addressing why it's so difficult to find the answer. Now, while I do hope you have my book, this particular information is not presented as distinctly there as it will be here. And this is one of those must-watch videos. 
The purpose of this video is to lay the foundation for the six videos that will follow. There's a quote by Benjamin Franklin that goes, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And it is ever so true. In fact, for most things, preparation for a task is just as important as the actual task. I'm a huge planner and I prepare in advance for everything. <laughs> I'm always looking way ahead, anticipating what comes next and doing whatever best paves the way for the future. I guess a lot of that is because I'm a surgeon and preparation for surgery is certainly as important as the actual surgery. But one of the huge side effects <laughs> of being a huge planner <laughs> is that I hate surprises. <laughs> I love the planning of an event as much as I like the actual event. And anything that robs me of the opportunity to prepare decreases my enjoyment of the actual event. Well, the reason I'm talking about preparation is that this video focuses entirely on preparing for the upcoming videos. It's preparation for addressing the question of whether estrogen, progestogen, or both cause breast cancer. One of the things that bothers me most about this quest to determine if estrogen, progestogen, or estrogen plus progestogen together increase risk or cause breast cancer is the fact that the efforts to study each of them separately is entirely inadequate. The only way we'll ever arrive at a valid answer about the contribution of any of them is to study each one in isolation. But that's more easily said than done. Not only must we separate these two hormones, estrogen and progestogen, from one another, we also have to separate them from all the other risk factors that can confound the findings. But that would mean separating them from real life, and that's impossible. Just look at what's already on the list of risk factors for breast cancer. It's genetic contributions from your parents your own history of cancer, your family history of cancer, your age, your reproductive history, your breast density, and your diet and lifestyle. It's virtually impossible to study estrogen or progestogen without including some or all of these other risk factors. And even when there is no attempt at all to isolate these hormones from those risk factors, most studies fail miserably in providing any useful information. And that's because they fail to distinguish a whole array of other things that they could isolate. It's as if they lump everything together and mix up the results. It's like trying to create a blended mix that means nothing. And part of that is due to failure to prepare. Here's an analogy. Let's say you want to know how a strawberry tastes. Well, the best way to find out how a strawberry tastes is to eat a fresh, pure strawberry. You wouldn't want to add sugar or lemon juice or chocolate or anything like that. And if you are only interested in strawberries, you must focus on and include only strawberries. If you combine strawberries with grapes, peaches, apples, and bananas, you're not going to know what a strawberry tastes like. You're going to have a blended mix. In order to know how strawberries taste, you have to taste just strawberries. You won't find out anything by making a smoothie of multiple fruits. So if you want to know if estrogen increases your risk or causes breast cancer, you have to study just estrogen. If you want to know if progestogen increases your risk or causes breast cancer, you have to study just progestogen. And if you want to know if estrogen plus progestogen together increase your risk or cause breast cancer, you have to study just estrogen. 
estrogen plus progestogen together. But most studies fail to do that. They fail to prepare. This is one of the reasons I'm always telling you don't rely on any single study. And if you want to know the specifics of the kind of woman for whom estrogen, progestogen, or both pose a risk, you have to study only that one kind of woman, be it by age, reproductive status, what have you. But most studies don't do that either. Instead, they take a large group of heterogeneous women and they blend all of them along with their differences as if to make a smoothie. It's like putting Barbies in a blender. It constitutes failure to prepare. Well, I won't do that. Instead, I'm going to separate out everything that might make a difference in finding the answer. I want to know as badly as you do. I don't know everything. In fact, my lack of knowledge greatly exceeds my knowledge. But I will make every attempt to search for the answers while avoiding the blended data approach that is so worthless. So in this video, I'm going to set the stage for a systematic analysis that we will carry out in the next three videos. And by the end of the last one, I think you'll at least know how to assess the possibilities of estrogen, progestogen, or both as risk factors or causes of breast cancer. So instead of vacillating between estrogen versus progestogen, and between the cyclic versus the continuous regimens, and between the hormones your body produces versus the hormone replacement you introduce into your body, I'm going to address each one individually. So here's a chart of what we'll do in the upcoming videos. This is the preparation. It's very, very simple. Across the top row, I've depicted the three categories of hormones we need to assess. Estrogen alone, progestogen alone, and estrogen plus progestogen together. The first column divides these into two categories. The hormones produced by your body and the hormones introduced into your body by hormone replacement therapy. So we'll be distinguishing production from introduction of these hormones. The second column further divides the categories. The hormones produced by your body are subdivided into menstruation, pregnancy, and perimenopause. And the hormones introduced into your body as replacement are subdivided into compounded, pharmaceutical, bioidentical, non-bioidentical, the cyclic regimen, and the continuous regimen. Estrogen alone is something we will examine in video 380. We will try to answer the question of whether estrogen alone causes breast cancer. And because your own body produces estrogen alone during perimenopause, we'll draw on it for our analysis. In addition, we'll assess the effects of estrogen alone as replacement therapy in the form of compounded, pharmaceutical, bioidentical, and non-bioidentical options. We will also consider estrogen taken alone on only some days during the month in a cyclic regimen, and estrogen taken every day of the month in a continuous regimen. In video 381, we'll do the same with progestogen, skipping progestogen produced all by itself by your own body since your body never produces progestogen all by itself. In video 382, we'll do the same with estrogen plus progestogen together, considering it from all sources. As you can see, <laughs> there are a lot of different angles to consider. That's real preparation. And I have never encountered any study on or resource of any kind that distinguishes clearly between these things. Instead, the tendency is to blend them. 
That's failure to prepare. This is common both in study design and in communication. Most of the time, people use the terms estrogen and HRT interchangeably. They are not interchangeable. You have to be specific as to whether you are talking about estrogen alone, progestogen alone, or estrogen plus progestogen together. And you also have to be specific about the source and the regimen. So this is how we will proceed. And then in video number 383, I'll present the history of research on HRT and breast cancer. And by then, you will really know most of what there is to know about it. And you'll understand why this is such a discombobulated area of menopause. Okie dokie. <laughs> I know this video wasn't very informative, but without it, you would not have been able to use the upcoming videos as well because failing to prepare is preparing to fail. <laughs> so I will leave you now and let you wait with bated breath for next week's video on Does Estrogen Cause Breast Cancer? You never have to wait for these videos to get the information or the help you need. No video can tailor everything to the one and only you. So if you feel antsy about needing a particular topic, don't wait for a video on it. Schedule a consultation at menopausetailor.me. That way, you'll get precisely what you need pronto. And then you can watch the videos in order at a more leisurely pace. If you want helpful hints and promos, subscribe to my newsletter. Social media will also give you some fun tips and information. And be sure you subscribe to my channel. I mean, that's a given, right? <laughs> so bye for now and come back in a week. <laughs> bye, my dears. <laughs>